Hi, today's topic is the Limit Order Book, and this is part of our course on Fundamentals of Trading. Here is the outline for our video today. First, we will ask the question, what does a limit order book look like? And we will be specifically talking about terms such as the top of the book, bid ask spread, day order versus good till cancelled. In the second part of the video, we'll be talking more specifically about limit order book dynamics. In this context, we will discuss order book depth, slippage, and other related terms. There are thumbnails in the video description, so if you would like to jump ahead to a particular part, feel free to do so. Now let's get started with the first part of the video. What does a limit order book look like? Well, it looks a bit like this. So this is the order book uh, for a hypothetical stock. As you can see, we have um, prices on the horizontal axis so over here. And we have quantities, quantity, on the vertical axis. And we have a buy side of the market on the left and sell side on the right. So these are all limit orders and the ones on the right on the so the ones on the left on the buy side are called bid orders and these are called ask orders or sometimes called also offer. Um, there are a few more things to mention here. So for example, let's try to interpret one of these graphs. So if you just focus here what we have is a price of 12.18, and we've got 1,010 shares offered at that price. So this is a limit ask order. And as you can see, we have a gap in the middle as well. So this area is called the top of the book. Top of the book. And this determines the bid ask spread as well. So what we have here is the highest bid price and the lowest ask price. So the distance between the two is called the bid ask spread. And sometimes these prices are called the inside codes. Another term used in this context is BBO, best bid offer. Uh, let me mention a couple of other things here. Um, so for example, um, sometimes in let's let's focus maybe one of these bars. So if we focus on on this bar, so this bar tell me, tells me that at twelve point oh eight there are two thousand two hundred twenty four shares available in the market. This might be multiple orders aggregated. So what I mean by that is that actually it might be several traders who have um, uh, submitted. A number of orders at the same price and they are sort of stacked up. Now you might wonder how they might be executed, right? So if, if a market order comes in to fill this area, which order would be executed first? And this is a, this relates to um, a, some sort of a priority protocol and there are a couple of candidates there. One of them is called um, price time priority. price time priority. This one says that when a market order arrives, first of all, the market order will get the best price. So first it will get this part. And once this is finished, when it comes over uh, this bigger chunk over here, then it will, so the, the, let's say there are multiple orders on this uh, uh, bigger uh, part. So the, the, this will be executed based on the time those limit orders are uh, submitted. So those traders who submitted their, their orders earlier, their orders will be executed first. So this is sort of a first in, first out mechanism, right? So we can call it FIFO, first in, first out. This encourages uh, to um, uh, traders to submit orders early so that their orders can be executed first. But there are other execution protocols there as well. So for example, one is called price size. 
So this encourages people to uh, submit large orders, because in this uh, regime, uh, when uh, you have multiple limit orders at the same price, the largest one, let's say this one, is executed first. Okay. And we should think of each limit order as a price quantity pair, right? So when you submit a limit price, sorry, limit order, you have to specify a price and a quantity, right? Okay, let's move on a bit further. I'll show you another representation of an order book. So it doesn't have to look like a graph like this. It can also be in the shape of a table or a list. And it contains exactly the same information. So we've got buy orders one on one side and sell orders on the other side. Okay. And here, as you can see, the prices are going up in this direction, whereas here, the prices are going up in this direction. So we've got the highest bid at the top and the lowest ask at the top. So this is why we, we have the term top of the book, because the highest bid and the uh, lowest ask are uh, placed at the top of the book when prices are sorted like this. Okay, And remember, the gap between these two prices is the bid-ask spread. And that is a measure of liquidity. To understand that, imagine you want to buy a sell, and for some reason, you buy it and you sell it back immediately and you will incur a cost and that's the bid ask spread for example if we have this particular order book if you buy one share this is the price you'll be paying 12.18 right it's because this is the lowest ask in the market and if you immediately sell it back you will get back this value so you'll buy it for 12.18 and sell it back for 12.15 which implies a loss of three cents. So that's called a round trip transaction cost. And that's the money you lose due to the bid ask spread or the quoted spread. Right. One more thing to mention here um, there's another concept called mid price. And a mid price is simply the average of the uh, highest bid and uh, lowest ask. Okay, so it's the midpoint of those two. In this case, it's 12.165, I believe. So let's summarize the discussion here. So in the first part of the video, we discussed the top of the book. Uh, we talked about the inside code. So these are essentially the highest bid and lowest ask. Mid price is simply the midpoint of those two. We have introduced bid ask spread as a measure of liquidity. Quote spread is the same thing just a different name. Another term used is best bid offer, BBO. And remember, the reason this is a liquidity cost is that it involves this round trip transaction cost. We also talked about uh, different execution um, policies. A common one is called price time priority, which means that if you have multiple uh, limit orders at the same price, then the one that has been, that was submitted first is executed first, so it's first in, first out. Whereas in the case of price size priority, at the same price, the larger orders are uh, sub, um, submitted first. One thing which I haven't mentioned so far is the distinction between a day order and good till cancelled order. So let me explain the difference between these two as well. So when you submit a limit order, if it is a day order, at the end of the trading day, unless your um, order has been executed, it will disappear from the order book. So it's just valid for that day. But many times you would want your order to stay on the uh, limit order book. Then you have to specify uh, this GTC, good till canceled. So that's sort of an order qualifier, which tells your broker that, look, I, I want this um, order to stay on the book for a while. So uh, I'm specifying GTC. And typically your um, order won't stay in the, in the book forever. So typically there's a time limit, which, ma which might be a couple of months, so two, two or three months. Because if the order becomes completely stale, then there's no point of leaving, to, leaving it in the book anyway. All right, so let's move on to the second part of the um, video now. And let's talk a little bit more about limit order book dynamics. 
And what I would like to do in this part is to give you two examples to bring home the message about liquidity in relation to both market orders and limit orders. We have a separate uh, video on market orders and limit orders as well. Just bear that in mind. So first, let's assume that you submit a market buy order for 2,000 shares. Okay, 2,000 shares. Unlike a limit order, in a market, buy or, uh, market order, you don't need to specify the price. Because when you submit this sort of order, you want it to be executed at the best price possible. And let's see what this order is going to do to the order book. Basically, it's going to take away some liquidity, right? So you want to buy the shares. So you need to look at the red bars here, which is the sell side, right? So those people are trying to sell the shares and you want to buy some. So you can see that you won't execute your uh, order fully at the best possible price, 1218, because there are only 1010 shares available at that uh, price level. So you will actually completely take away this block, right? 1010 shares there. And on top of that, you will also take away a little uh, chunk of the second block as well. So you'll get 990 um, um, shares from there as well. So once your order is executed, actually the order book will be transformed into this, right? So the, this bar is gone and part of this bar is gone as well. And look what has happened to the bid ask spread. It has become wider, right? Because initially we had some volume at 12.18. Now it has moved to 12.90, right? So you actually took away liquidity from the market by submitting a market order. Now let's give another example. Let's suppose that now you submit a limit sell order. So this will go to the sell, sell side of the market, which is this side. And let's assume, remember limit orders have to, have to be price quantity pairs. So let's assume that you want to buy, sorry, you want to sell 300 shares at 12.16, okay? Now you will be providing liquidity to the market. What's gonna happen now is that you are creating essentially, oops, sorry. You are creating a bar over here, okay? And this will bring it to 12.16, right? And the quantity will be 300 shares. So let's see that happen. As you submit your limit sell order, the order book is transformed from this into this, like we have discussed. So you've got a new order here, 300, 1216. And check out the new bid ask spread. Now it is a lot tighter than before, thanks to your limit order, which has provided liquidity to the market. There are two more relevant concepts that I would like to discuss here which is called the order book depth. So again, this is a measure of liquidity and it's all about the uh, quantities uh, offered at different price levels. So the more quantity available at each price level, the deeper the limit order book is, and that's desirable from a liquidity perspective, right? So for example, say you submit a market um, sell order to buy so market sell order to sell uh, 3,000 shares, right? So market sell 3,000 shares. Now this will be executed on the buy side of the market because those guys are willing to buy and you want to sell. So you will completely take away this block, right? So this will go to you. And you will also completely take this block as well because you know 620 plus 2,200 so 2,800 something, uh, and you want 3,000 shares. So you will also actually get a big a chunk of this block as well. So by actually submitting this um, or market order, you will take away a lot of liquidity from the market, right? So the actually the best bid price will drop from 12.15 to 12.03, right? 
because uh, these two blocks will be completely gone. And now we have 12.03 as the best bid price. So we have a much wider bid ask spread. And also there's less now offered at the, at the best bid as well. Okay. What would happen if the market was deeper? So for example, if this was six, if this wasn't 620, if it was 3620, then the best bid wasn't going to move because this, uh, at this level, uh, this block would be enough to absorb your entire order. So that's what we mean by depth. So the deeper the order book is, the better in terms of market uh, liquidity, because there will be less price impact of larger uh, transactions. And this is good for everyone, because also, if this is 620, so again, let's forget about this, you are not buying all your shares, sorry, you are not selling all your shares at 1215. You are only selling 620 of them at 1215. You are getting another 2200 at 1208, and still some at 12.03, right? So you, you would like to sell all of them at 1215, but that is not happening because, you know, your order is essentially too big uh, for it to be handled at the top of the book. Okay. So this is market depth and price impact, right? Or sorry, order book depth and price impact. A final term that I would like to discuss in this video is slippage, which is a related term. So now let's imagine this scenario. So let's say I'm going to uh, uh, submit a market sell order and you have submitted yours, but I see the order book just before you submit it. So let's say I hope that I will get this price of 1215, but because your market order was just before mine, you will take a lot of uh, liquidity away from the market. And when it comes to my turn, I won't be able to transact at 1215. Instead, I will be transacting at 1203. So this is what we mean by slippage. And in this case, it's negative slippage because the, mar the price has moved uh, to a point that is less favorable for me. And sometimes you can have positive slippage as well, right? If the price moves towards uh, uh, in, in a direction that's favorable to you, actually you might get a better price than what you hoped for. So it can work both ways, but the bottom line is, even when you submit market orders, there is always some uh, price uncertainty due to this um, uh, depth of the order book, slippage, and so on. All right, so let's summarize uh, the concepts we've discussed here. We've talked about order book depth and price impact, both of which, again, are very much rel related to liquidity. And finally, we've, we've talked about slippage as well, which can have either a negative impact or a positive impact um, in, in your uh, transaction in terms of the um, your net uh, bottom line, essentially. Okay, that's all I want to uh, discuss in this video. I hope you have found it useful. If that's the case, please consider liking the video and also subscribing to our channel. And I will be looking forward to see you in another video. Thank you very much.